So here's my second video. Um, I left off here that organisms reproduce either by asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction. They will always do one of those, and in some organisms, um, actually both, believe it or not. And then finally, the last characteristic of life is um, this idea of change through time. That change through time is often done um, by Darwinian evolution or evolution by natural selection that we'll talk about um, later this year. But some of the keys here is it's always about a population of organisms. It's the population that changes over time. It's not one organism. One organism just lives and dies. It's the population from generation to generation that changes over time. And that's the key with our last idea here. Um, most biologists um, if you want to consider something living, we require all seven characteristics of life um, to be accomplished. Um, that's kind of how your book presents it and how a lot of biologists would also present um, what is life. It's cells. It's cells that can respond to stimuli, maintain homeostasis, have a metabolism, grow and develop have either a means of asexual or sexual reproduction and change over time. Now we have viruses. Um, so viruses, they've never fit well into this idea of life, although they do some pretty crazy things to make you think, um, maybe we should really be focusing on these guys and maybe our definition of life um, should be changed a bit little bit to um, include them. So here are um, some different shapes of viruses. Here's my favorite, um, this weird looking guy. This is a um, bacterial phage. So a virus that's designed to infect um, bacteria, and that's how it gets its name. Um, that has one of the mo more cooler designs, but you can see all sorts of weird um, shapes and sizes. But no matter what, notice all of these are measured in nanometers. Um, which was different than like a blood, like a red blood cell or E. coli bacteria, which you often wouldn't measure in nanometers because this is 10,000 nanometers, but you're using micrometers. So viruses are so small, we use now our different unit um, to describe them. And here are some common ones. Here's the first virus ever described um, kind of in depth, the tobacco mosaic virus. Here's Ebola. You may have heard of that before. Um, viruses, in many ways, are different than um, anything we consider to be a lot. So here's a bacteria. Um, like any basic cell, it has a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and then DNA. Viruses don't have all of that. So if we look over to the virus here, um, we have some type of genetic material but that can be DNA now, it can be RNA, it can be single-stranded, it can be double-stranded, it could be any of those things. And then it has a protein coat, which can have all sorts of different shapes and sizes and designs. It can sometimes be covered with a lipid, all sorts of things, but certainly different than any cell that we consider to usually be living. Viruses cannot reproduce on their own. They have to infect a cell to actually do it. Here's a general picture of how it's done. So you have your virus attaches, inserts its genetic material, um, confuses the cell into replicating that genetic material, um, and also the proteins that it needs. When that virus is reassembled, it breaks open the cell and then spreads to the next cell and on and on and on and on and on and on and on. So that's reproduction but requires a cell. Here's a slide um, that kind of starts to get at the idea that viruses, certainly um, with the cell's help because the cell reproduces them, can change over time. So here we have one virus that infects the cell. Then we get lots of viruses. Those viruses all go to infect other cells. But every time you make new viruses, you can have small mistakes like seen down here, and get a new virus 